I am Michael Patel. And I'm Keisha Burns. And we are seniors at Shepherd University in Shepherdstown, West Virginia. Um, as we said before, seniors, um, my concentration is computer information technology, networks, security, and biometrics. And mine as well. <laughs> um, our intention is to provide a summary of recent progress in the Internet of Healthcare in field. This is a research paper. Our paper looks at some of the concerns and some of the benefits of these devices. How wearing an Internet of Intelligent Things device, a particular wearable device, can affect a patient's psychological and physiological well-being. This paper also looks at some of the security concerns of these devices regarding the devices themselves, how they can be manipulated, and how they can be used as holes for hackers to get into and access databases. For the three functional parts of wearable devices, there's sensor integration, electrical cable-based networking, and digital modules. So basically you have the sensors, the cables, and the brains. Different parts of the body require different kinds of sensors. What you apply is here, you don't want to put it at the bottom of your feet. A sensor needs to be comfortable and it needs to be accurate. A large device may remind a patient that he is sick, it may cause him psychological um, distress. Pardon me, I can't hit the button here. Um, of course, sensor integration, sensors are the backbone of it. Electrical cable-based networking is actually the cables that connect the sensors to the digital modules. They need to be comfortable and they need to be washable. And the modules can, of course, become disconnected. The modules are the brains. They include the processors and the power modules. Can be actually the power and the processors can be actually put in together um, to com to complete the unit. Uh, and as the cabling can go, can actually go down the seams. Will work in different ways that works in with the uh, garment itself. And of course, the, the modules themselves are not washable. And then, of course, some of the benefits um, are the alerts um, that you have for like patient transport. You can have this during, um, if you're at home and you're alerted, this can transport over to 911 emergency, and that can also trans which can um, alert them to send out 911 to your home. Um, this can send to, uh, basically catastrophe happening with low blood sugar, a fall, um, a heart attack, and then you'd be hooked up to more sensors, of course, during the transportation to the hospital where the hospital can be alerted to provide you better care when you're arrived. Um, and then accuracy, of course, must be balanced with comfort. Um, the technology is getting smaller and more flexible, giving patients more comfort and provides more options. But we want to also balance that out with patient accuracy. We want to make sure that while they're comfortable, we're getting the most accurate data, no matter what, <laughs> no matter what their comfort level is. It doesn't matter what it is, as long as they're getting you know, proper treatment. And then, of course, smartphones do more than just collect data. They also monitor. Um, smartphones can act as hubs for small devices, enabling the devices to be smaller and more comfortable. Um, smartphones give the healthcare facility more internet of, of intelligent thing options. And then the devices may become promised, though. Um, security is, of course, a huge concern within um, healthcare. Everything has to be HIPAA compliant. So um, institutions have the responsibility to protect their staff and patients and their records. Um, it has to provide responsibility for everything. Of course, there's not really a good sense of regulation. There's not a good set of standards or set of protocols. If you want to start up um, your own healthcare transportation uh, vehicle, um, there's not a whole lot of standards right now. There's not a good set of laws, which is extremely, extremely scary. You have to essentially be HIPAA compliant, but other than that, you don't have a whole lot of laws going on. Currently in where we are, there was recently a 911, 
there's a transportation company for emergency services that had a huge amount of issues with their vehicles. They were not regulated to do anything about the vehicles. Transmission problems, they could break down with a, with a patient dying in their vehicle. Not regulated to do anything. Um, also, small companies are not obligated to update their devices to keep up with their firmware. The databases could be also hacked. Because these devices could cause holes in the data, into the network where they could, hackers can come in and uh, collect it, um, destroy or manipulate the database. There are no regulations except it's all about companies' willingness to please their customers and to keep up with the latest security is up to them. There's nothing there except that they want to sell, continue to sell their, pro their product. There is a complete lack of standards. This has caused home devices to be more prevalent than transport devices. And it's no wonder the industry is focused on home devices because there's no regulations and there are lots of holes in the access points that the transport vehicles could have. Security, because of the vulnerabilities in these holes, is created. It's the institution's responsibility to keep up with the latest security. Now, the industry is still open. The benefits of these new technologies have yet to be realized. We have no idea where it's going. Um, we have no idea where it can go. One thing we do know is it will not drive insurance costs down. No matter how successful these devices are, insurance rates will continue to go up. And of course, as it goes to the patients, smaller is better. The question is, is it the government's responsibility to keep up with these updates? Because if it is, it'll take some catastrophic event with the government through enact regulation, and that is our presentation. Any questions? We hit it right on one. Okay, great. Thank you. And these, of course, are our references. Yes. Um, earlier, when you were talking about it looked like wearable sensors and so on, you, you had the issue of cable. And um, I, I'm kind of curious what your view is about wireless sensor interface instead of everything all cable together. It's certainly, obviously, easier for everyone involved. But as the cabling goes, it, it, it's better as in it's safer, it's more secure. Um, Think of a pacemaker as a standalone device. There are no cables in it, but it's still pretty easy if it has a um, if it has a wireless device that connects it to anything, either outside the body or in the body. Thus, a hacker could potentially get into that pacemaker and make changes to it. As security is concerned, cabling is a much more sound way to go, and done with a flexible, you know, flexible cloth and flexible textiles going through the seams of the textile. It shouldn't cause too much discomfort. Per patient. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs>